Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be painting comic style metal on Gorgodra from Monster Apocalypse. I'm going to jump right in and begin base coating his claws, toenails and some other details with Mechanicus Standard Grey. I'll then be using Administratum Grey and some P3 Mora White to highlight these areas. So when I'm painting metal in the comic style, what I want to try and do is give the miniature a sense of motion and I do that by making sure the highlights and so on are really kind of jagged and uneven and it kind of gives the idea that there's things around the model that are reflecting off the metal and they're you know in motion or they're swinging by etc and so obviously you're not going to see that right now in the base coat step right now i'm just laying down a bunch of boring mechanicus gray but when i go to start actually applying the highlights you'll see that i do them in a very jagged sort of sound wave style you know they have that kind of feel to them they look a little bit like you know, a waveform would. And the reason for that is it gives the idea that things aren't quite settled, things are in motion, and it makes the model look a little more imposing. Now before I begin base coating the gold areas, which will be the shoulders and helmet, I'm going to get a little bit of Vallejo Game Color Hexed Lichen and just get the power elements. So that's sort of these recessed grooves in the different parts of the armor, as well as the sort of speaker grill or headlight looking details right here that I'm painting now. This isn't really the focus of this tutorial, but I thought it would look a little weird if they just magically showed up painted, so let's just skip ahead now. You get the idea. Up next, I'm going to base coat the gold areas with Citadel Scrag Brown. Now you can see that the Scrag Brown is a little bit translucent as it goes on. You can see some of the green and purple through this first coat, so I will come back and apply a second coat. Because it's really redundant, I'm not going to show you that on camera. Alright, base coats are down, it's time to begin detailing the metal. I'm going to begin on the grey side with some Administratum Grey from Citadel. Now there's a lot of different ways to approach comic style painting. There's basically as many ways as there are different comics out there. But my personal style is to focus on sharp blocky highlights. And especially when I'm painting metal, I want those highlights to be very sort of jagged and uneven as well because it helps give the impression of movement or surface texture. What I mean by that is it helps kind of look like maybe it's a brushed steel or some other sort of slightly textured metal as opposed to just flat gleamy metal which is a little bit harder to paint in the first place. So you can see as I apply these highlights, first of all I'm using a very large brush here for this kind of work. This is a Winsor Newton um, Series 7 size 2. And I pretty much use this brush for the entire model. 
but it's also worth noting that I'm using the paint a little bit on the thick side. I'm not doing anything in the way of blending. I'm really actually kind of almost letting my brushwork show through because I want to have a very authentic sort of sketched feel to it. One thing I like to keep in mind when I'm approaching a comic style miniature is that I'm going to be adding a lot of black to the model later. And because of that, everything during this step should look almost unreasonably bright. The model should look kind of goofy and almost ugly in a way because I'm going to be adding so much black ink later that helps bring the tone of the whole model down that when I'm done the base coat and detailing stage, everything has to look too bright. It has to look out of place. So this triangular tip of the tail is a perfect place to demonstrate one of my approaches to doing comic style metal highlighting. So you can see on this right hand side of the tail, I've brought the highlight mostly up to the top of the piece, but now as I paint the left hand side of the tail, I'm bringing the highlight down to the bottom instead. And this is so that when you view the model from different angles, you can see a very sharp delineation between the left and the right, and it creates a very evident crease in the model to help really make that point on the tail look sharp. Now of course the highlight on one side doesn't really make sense but that's actually very common in comic books is that a lot of times your lighting doesn't actually really reflect the environment so much as it does try to create you know something dynamic with the character in the comic and so that's really what I'm doing here. I'm creating an artistic light as opposed to an environmental one. One that helps capture and sort of display the features of the miniature. Next up, I'm going to bring out a little bit of Mora White and mix it 50-50 with the existing gray here to make a nice mid-tone shade, and then I'll carry forward into Pure White after that. As each highlight progressively gets lighter, the highlights themselves are also getting tighter and a little more focused. This is where now, instead of just painting, say, a large gray triangle, I'll start to give it a little bit of shape and some variety, and also hold it tighter to edges. Even though I am doing smaller, tighter highlights at this point, I'm still using a fairly large brush. I'm still using a Winsor Newton size 2. Gorgaja's right claw is held more or less vertically. This is pretty much a flat surface. So I'm really trying to focus on a bottom to top gradient here, though it is broken up in shape.
Now I'm back to work on the tail and armor plates on the back, and I'm just using the lighter gray to really accent that alternating triangle style that I worked with. Unlike his right claw, this claw's top surface is almost purely horizontal, so I've chosen to put a highlight on both sides and have them meet in the middle using a sort of sound wave jagged edge. So you can see I'm going to bring that across the middle now. I'm just sort of lightly feathering it out. It does give it a little bit of a blend, but I'm not really intentionally blending. It's just sort of a free side effect. And I'm going to actually, right here you can see I'm kind of going back over it and building that color up just a little bit further. And like I said earlier, this looks almost obscenely bright. You know, it's far too bright for what the model should look like. When we get around to adding black lines later, that will take care of that. But as if that wasn't bright enough, I'm now going to work in some pure white. For the most part, I'm being very reserved with the pure white. It's really just the left claw where I kind of go a little bit overboard with it, just this middle section here. And the reason for that is I want this claw to be sort of a focal point in the miniature. I want it to be very visible and very imposing. Like he's kind of lunging forward or stabbing with it at that very moment. And so I want it to be just a little bit brighter than other aspects of the model might be. And also because it is sort of a sunward facing surface, you know, it is almost flat and horizontal and kind of curved upward. I just wanted to be just a little bit more bright. But you can see other places here, I'm really just taking a very little bit of white and just bringing it to an extreme edge or just the pure center of where I've done a gray highlight. Coming to Gorgadra's right claw, I'm much more sparing with the weight. With the steel aspects done, I'm now going to move on to the gold side, which I've already base coated with Scrag Brown. On top of that, I'll be using Citadel Averland Sunset and P3 Moro White to build up the highlights, and I'll be mixing these two paints for a mid-tone as well. So now I'm going to begin using Averland Sunset in very much the same way I use the Administratum Gray on the steel aspects of this model. There are a lot more small edges and finer details because I'm doing the helmet in this color and it's got some panel lines and just smaller panels and bits and so on. So this is a little more precise work. I'm still using that same Winsor Newton size too though. So 
So you can see here on the left side of his head, I'm sort of creating two highlights, one at the very, very top of the crest of the head and one towards the bottom and then sort of using an edge highlight to tie the two together. To help accent the crease and create some opposing color values, on the right side of his head, I'm going to bring all the highlights to this bottom edge instead and actually leave it dark up towards the crest. So you can see here that even though I'm bringing a highlight up towards the crest, I'm stopping just a little bit short of it, so there's going to be that hard delineation between the Scrag Brown and the Averland when you look at the model from above. So you get a nice sharp crease created by the two different values of the gold. So now I'm getting ready to paint the highlights on the gold shoulders, and this is probably the most fun aspect I found of this whole model for me because it's really quite almost freeform. It's a very large, slightly curved surface, and it really lets you play with this comic style. You can see I'm really digging into that sort of sound wave style highlight, you know, pulling those little sort of ripples of the waveform out along the surface. And I'm doing that because I wanted to have a sort of a brushed steel or a brushed aluminum kind of feel to it. Now, obviously, it's tinted more gold than aluminum. But just that sort of look you get when someone's, you know, run a belt sander across some steel or some aluminum and you get those sort of weird ripples in the surface or, you know, waves that catch the light. I really love those just aesthetically, but they also really help impart a sense of motion into a surface because the light kind of scatters, especially in a linear fashion. It makes it look like things are just kind of speeding by. And I really want that feeling for this model. I want it to look like this monster just can't settle down. So one of the key forms I've found I use over and over again when I'm painting in comic style, especially with metal, is easily described as the letter H, and it's where I paint highlights on two parallel edges and then connect them with a sort of crossbar, which is usually a little bit jagged. But you can see here there's sort of the implied shape of the letter H here where there's a highlight above and below and then a little squiggly area that kind of joins the two together. And even on really small surfaces like this, I still try to make use of that. You'll see it more when I get into the finer highlights later. Now because the shoulders are a much larger surface, I'm going to use just a little bit of scrag brown to blunt the edges of those highlights I just added to kind of tie them back to the existing scrag brown undercoat a little bit better. Now I'm going to mix up about a 50-50 blend of white and Averlyn Sunset and begin the next stage of highlighting. This is really going to start to now emphasize that sound wave brushed metal kind of feel. I'm also now going to start doing some edge highlighting with this color because it is bright enough that it'll start to really create the impression of a sharp crisp edge when seen against the Scrag Brown or even the Averland Sunset at a different angle.
Now this side of the shoulder is almost a perfect example of that H pattern I was discussing earlier where there's two very evident parallel highlights with a line connecting them right around the middle even though that line's a little bit squiggly. Now I'm going into the gold one more time with just a little bit of P3 Moro White. This is just a pure white to really finish off some of these highlights. I'm also using the P3 Moro White on just some of the sharpest corners, just a tiny little dot of it. And the reason for that is it just makes the corner really, really stand out. It just really pulls one edge of that corner just out really sharply. And you'll see I'll only do it on one face. So here where, you know, this is sort of a three-sided corner, I'm really just focusing on one side. Alright Flock, that wraps up the metal focus on Gorgadra. In the final video, I'm going to be bringing out the acrylic black ink and just adding all that sharp comic style lining and shading to this model that really is the cornerstone of the comic style look. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. There's plenty more here on YouTube. You can also join me twice a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios on Thursday and Sunday evenings at 8pm Eastern where I do stream my painting live. If you want to support the show, you can do that at patreon.com slash epicduck. Even giving as little as a dollar a month helps keep the lights on and the paint flowing. You can also help by hitting subscribe here on YouTube or sharing this video with some friends. Thanks a lot!